five, four, three, two, one. Are you ready? For this act, I require complete silence. I'm going to channel the spirit of Dr. Alexander Cannon, the greatest magician this world has ever seen, who exalted the status of the telepathic mystic who enraptured the masses with his proof of invisible influence. He took his own crystal ball and inside its vision saw the future in desire. A man's all-consuming weakness for power. Welcome to the circus of the curious magician who enchants his captive audience with the actions of the pendulum, who holds wonder and charisma and the magic that he's brought from levitation to recordings of other people's thoughts. From vanishing coins to metamorphic candles, from mysterious coffins to cards that fill the air, from silk scarves to cigarettes, he performed his tricks to full effect, except his feats were decried. His artistic greatness reduced to discredited con artist status, and the power of your unconscious was dismissed, replaced with shallow and materialistic beliefs. Until tonight, when I challenge you at a most elaborately magical show of them all, behold! The mind of the magician, Dr. Alexander Cannon, more wild and more extravagant than the most debauched imagination. His incredible ideas trapped for almost 60 years, but silence. Is it not time to peer inside the glory that is the Manx magician's mind? Speak, Dr. Cannon. For it is I, Mesmer, your loyal servant, the collective power of all those who grace this auditorium. See how they watch me keenly hanging on my every word. The subtle rhythms of my actions, a pendulum gaining momentum. One blink, or one smirk, or one sudden jerk, and they are bewitched with expectation. Or oh, we could hold them here like this forever, Alexander, do you agree? That together we could alter their collective behaviour, teaching that most of what they've been taught is conjecture, that their familiar customs are really illusions and that hypnotism, in your own words, Dr Cannon, is the most powerful rule of this world that we live in. Think about it, Alexander. We could prove to them that their internal worlds are exceptional, more full of potential than they could ever imagine, vaster than oceans and heavens and a whole lexicon of language. We could show them that pain can be tamed. We could teach them that music and ritual and stories and pictures awaken their senses to the senses and into direct communication with divine, unconscious mind or anything is possible through clairvoyance. We could maybe even raise the dead. Oh, Alexander. We could control their minds instead. After all, three, two, one. Would that be so wrong? Look at them, Alexander. Most already under the hypnotic sway of the media or some savvy politician. Completely unaware that personality and the power of the personal story gives rise to rulers who have simply mastered the art of mesmerising the masses. Rulers who have placed innate wonder and wisdom with the sugar rush of materialism and instant gratification that quickly dissipates. But that's okay. Because everyone conforms. And isn't that a true act of black magic, Dr. Cannon? One that must surely inspire the greatest of all. For miserable conventionality is a power that dwarfs intellect and is the mother of non-entity. To quote yourself. Dr. Cannon, and imagine having that kind of power, the power to disempower. Think of all we could do. We could incite hatred. We could divide, rule and conquer. We could turn brother on brother and keep our subjects subservient and utterly dependent. Wouldn't that be fun? Oh, but I'm forgetting myself, Alexander. For isn't that what you fought against all along? Isn't that why you travelled far across the Orient, where you claimed to levitate above a chasm in Tibet? Were you trained with the mystics and told stories of your exploits? And though some might be far-fetched, I read your books and you had insight. You studied the darkest quarters and the greatest mystics of the mind, which makes me wonder whether perhaps ulterior motives came into play when you were harassed by the Medical Council and by MI5. For many truths you mused over are still suppressed today. And music, art and literature are often dismissed as dispensable when those well-versed in coercion know to the unconscious mind they are key. And black magic is all around us. Its presence largely felt as a hunch but unseen. And we are often left feeling powerless. When we are more powerful than our most mesmeric dreams. And you, Dr. Cannon, were a mystic, a showman, who played your cards well on the stage of the magician, but more than that, Alexander, oh, three, two, one. 
you know, the dark and deadly art and the power of hypnotism. <laughs>